Hey guys, I'm back. This is part two of my Predator by Anycubic review. This is going to be some prints and some final thoughts, some pros and cons, just me rambling some more. So uh, stay tuned. Okay, so we are back. This is today, uh, it's probably like four or five days, I don't even remember, um, since I shot or started shooting the first video, which I will link down in the, in the box down there. Um, so if you want to take a look at that, you can. It's just the build and uh, initial setup and leveling and all that stuff. So this video, we're going to talk about printing and a little bit of calibration and some issues that I had and uh, I'm going to show you a bunch of prints that I did and some time-lapse things and stuff. So anyway, here we go. First, I'm going to say uh, any of these models that I'm going to show you, I sliced using Simplify 3D in a profile that I created. Um, it's a very, you know, the settings are kind of very generic. They're 0 .0, uh, 0 0.2 millimeter layer height. Uh, five top and bottom layers, three outlines, 10% and fill, and I ran them all at 100 millimeters per second. There, er, there are a couple variables on some of the models just because of what they are and what I was trying to do, so I will point those out as I get to those models. Okay, before I start with the prints, I want to talk about what I have done to the printer so far as far as modifications go. So in the first video, I did mention that I put Capricorn XS, I'm sorry, TL tube, which is the light blue one, in the printer in replacement of the original stock Bowden tube that goes here. Um, it was also a little bit shorter. So about nearing the end of the printing process, um, I thought, hey, just for giggles, let me try XS. So I swapped out XS and I actually made it the original length again. And I feel like it actually did make a difference, but I made some other changes too. So um, I'll talk about those as I get there. But the first thing I did change kind of right off the bat is when I started doing a, like my very, very first prints, I did notice there was a lot of salmon skin, not a lot, but there was a reasonable amount of salmon skin, too much for me to find acceptable. So I happened to have a stash of TL smoothers, so I popped them in. So it's super, super easy. And if you're not gonna do any real modifications to this printer at all, I would recommend it because it did make a difference. Um, and they're super easy to put in. You take the acrylic top off right here, and then all you do is the board, everything is really, really accessible. They did a really nice job as far as the layout goes inside. So everything is super accessible. They're really easy just to you know unplug the stepper motor cable, plug the TL smoother in and go. So it took me all of like three minutes. So if you're not gonna do any other changes, that's one thing I would recommend. And you can get, you know, three TL smoothers on Amazon for like 12 bucks. So I would recommend that. Anyway, let's get to the prints. So first one, I actually have a camera right here too. So I'm gonna do some close-ups by holding things down here. So the first thing I did uh, was an XYZ cube and I will uh, show you the time-lapse real quick. So here, take a look. Here's the cube. So you can see it actually did come out pretty nice. And there's my cat, if you can hear him. That's Tyrion. So it does look good. So then from there, I went on to a Benchy because what's a calibration without a Benchy? So the difference between, uh, this is one of the models that was different. So I printed this at 60 millimeters per second because I was, tr I was trying something and I'll show you in a second. Um, but this came out pretty good, actually. I was pretty surprised. Um, surface quality is good. It has a few little zits here and there, but it, it always does. So the only thing that I was a little um, 
disappointed by is it didn't really do a great job with this overhang in here and on all of them. So you can see in the back porthole, is that what they call it? A porthole? And you can see that, you know, it was a little sketchy. So I decided, hey, but the bottom looks really good. And you can see that I wrote 60 on there and I'll tell you why. So I decided to do one at 120. They're almost identical. And to be honest, the, the overhang structure actually came out a little bit better on the faster one. So there you go. Then I decided, hey, I need to do my favorite calibration model. There's no time lapse of this, don't be sad. The Calicat. I love this guy. But you can see, again, surface quality is really good. The overall, it came out really good. So, so far, we're doing all right. Then I decided to do a torture test. So I just went on Thingiverse and I found a random torture test that I thought looked pretty evil. So I grabbed it, sliced it up, and here's the time lapse. And here is the print. Now you can see right away, it, the time lapse didn't quite catch the top of it, uh, the very top. But you can see right away, lots of stringing. And that this stringing is more than likely just a heat setting that I didn't really bother to super adjust. But I'm not sure, again, if all of this kind of crappiness in here is more related to the heat setting. That's gonna take a little bit more trial and error to find out. In general, again, surface quality was good. Bridging was okay. So if you can kind of see in here, you know, it did okay in the short runs, but not really great on the longer ones at all. And the surface quality kind of suffered a little bit on this one. Although the lines came out really good and the numbers on the overhang test came out good. The top surface quality here isn't as good as it should be. So, eh, it came out okay. The other thing was uh, the tolerance options here. It's probably easy to show you from the bottom. So it's 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and 0.5. So the 0.5 is the only one that actually popped out. And it actually fell out where the 0.4, I can kind of wiggle it just a tiny bit the rest of them are fused in there. So calibration, probably, but we'll see. The other thing was the bridging here was pretty good, but the overhang, it didn't do a super job. So that's kind of when I discovered that the part cooling was gonna be an issue. And I'll show you uh, in a couple more prints how I fix that, or at least better to the situation. Okay, moving on to the fun models. So first model I printed was uh, by a modeler who I've been following for quite a bit of time now. Uh, he's known as Eastman 3D, his name's David Ostman, and uh, he's just a fantastic modeler. I follow him and I support him on Patreon, and uh, I will actually put a link to his uh, Patreon page below. And uh, this is a model that I use all the time for calibration, for things like that. So when I get a printer that I feel like mechanically it's calibrated perfectly, and then I think I have my slicing profile perfect, then I go for the Captain America. So let's watch the time lapse and then I'll show you close up.
Okay, so you can see this came out really nice. There's a couple of things in the slicing profile, I think, that, you know, the edges in the corner here, it wasn't hitting quite right. But in general, I was very happy with the way this turned out. Um, you can see the, the face. Let's get a close-up of his face here. His face came out quite good. Even the overhang on the chin looks really good. So in general, I was really happy with this. So I thought, hey, I'm getting close. Here, Cap, you sit there. So then I moved on to another one of David's models. This is one of his newer ones. This is Wonder Woman. Um, and I have these printed all over the place. Um, I've got a bigger one behind me next to a cap, but you can't see him because I'm blocking it. Um, so let's watch the time lapse for Wonder Woman and I'll show you what happened here. You can see that different model, how this one came out pretty rough. So there's, the surfaces aren't super smooth, uh, overhangs did not happen well. And then on this model particularly, I use supports just under her chin because this one requires them under her chin. And it didn't come off super clean. I couldn't really get the support off right here. And then if you look under her chin, her boobs are in the way. There we go. If you look under her chin, you can see that the quality, you know, of that surface there is just not really good. So, oh, there's Ty again. Oh, hi, baby. He's back. He's this. He needs to sit on me all the time. He sits on me while I'm working all day. So here's Wonder Woman. And let's move on while I move on with the cat. All right, I'm going to keep talking to these people. Is that okay? All right, so then I, I moved on to uh, a slightly bigger and a more detailed model, I guess. Uh, these, This one and then the next two are actually by another modeler who I absolutely love. I also support on Patreon. Uh, he His name is uh, Vedran Marjanovic. Probably you know him as Wexter. So, oh, hi. Okay, Ty, everyone says hi. Here they are. Okay, bye. So this is one of his newer models. This is Zifrong the Orc, and I'm gonna show you uh, the time-lapse and then we'll look at him up close. So as you can see, looking at him, the quality of this is not even close to where it should be. So again, I've printed this model several times on other machines and uh, it comes out much, much better. So this is when I determined that the part cooling was absolutely an issue. And um, I think this model, I wrote it down, hold on. Uh, Yep, this is the last model that I used just using the standard TL tube and the original part cooling duct. So, but you can see it's really rough on the horns here. And then there was a lot of sagging in here. Let me see if you can, if I can show you that better. All in here, you can see all the sagging down here. So, and even all through here. So, and the, his nose ring, you can really barely make out as a nose ring. So, again, I've printed this model a bunch of times, so I know what it looks like when it's printed on a, you know, beautifully calibrated machine. So, that was my elbow. So then I thought, okay, I'm done. 
I need to make a couple changes. So that's when I switched back, well, I switched to this version of the Capricorn XS tube, and I went back to the original length because I thought, I don't know, maybe the weight holding it down a little bit could have had something to do with it. But the part cooling duct in the, uh, in the stock model it doesn't come down quite low enough. So it's blowing more on the bottom of the block and the nozzle than it is on the part. So somebody in one of the Facebook groups for the Predator that I'm in actually posted a slightly modified stock version of the part cooler. So I printed that out in uh, polycarbonate on my Raptor, only took a couple hours and installed it. And now another model from Wexter that you'll see this made a giant difference. So let's watch the time lapse. It's Catwoman from Wexter. And here she is. Now, this is the only model I actually post-processed because it's two parts, so I glued them together just so it was easier to show you. Um, and right off the bat, you can see the difference in the surface quality. It is much, much better. The details are so much nicer. This whole area here, I had all supports because she's printed tilted like this. So I wanted to support that really well. So there was all supports through here. There's not one marking for supports anywhere on here. And overall, it came out great. It's really, just to touch it, it's very, very smooth, even though, even though I only used uh, 0.2 layer height. So I was really happy with the way this came out. I decided to print big, and I decided to print fast, and I decided to print in vase mode. So... You can see how it came out and how I probably went a little overboard on the speed. So I'll show you the time lapse. Okay, so here is the rocket. Let's look at it up close. So I feel like I ran this a little too fast. I ran this at 160 millimeters a second. So it didn't quite survive it. So it, it was just too fast and either too hot or not hot enough, um, but it just, it didn't adhere once it hit this point. Everything up here is kind of a wreck. But hey, I learned something. Don't go too crazy. So there's all the prints. Let's talk about the printer and the pros and the cons and things that I would do. Let's talk about the pros. I have a list right there that I'm gonna be looking at. So yeah, anyway, so let's talk about the pros. The construction on this machine is outstanding. I really think they did a fantastic job the way they laid everything out. And what I'll do is I'll take a picture of the inside and I'll insert it here. And you can see how nice Everything looks, they, they organized everything in the wiring is fantastic. Everything is good. So they did a great job with that. Um, the construction itself is super sturdy. It's easy to make adjustments. So like I, I know I showed in the first video how to adjust the belt tension, things like that. It's really easy. It's not super, super easy to change the fan duct. That was a little challenging. Um, it probably would have been a lot easier if I took the whole effector and hot end off, but I didn't want to take it all apart. I just wanted to change the duct. So there's that. But in general, the build, 
the quality is outstanding. The Ultra Base, I've never used Ultra Base before. I am very much a mirror and Magigoo guy for all of my beds. I put mirrors on all of my machines. I have them custom cut at a local shop. I use Magigoo unless I'm using, you know, something like polycarbonate, then I use glue. Um, but I was really impressed with this Ultra Base. It does have to get up to temp, so you have to let it sit. Uh, it kind of levels itself out after a few minutes. But the pro is it heats up really fast. It only takes about a minute to get to 60. So that's nice. The spare parts, I talked about that in the first video. They included a ton of spare parts, an extra hot end, an entire hot end. Um, the, uh, I forget what else. Go back and look at the first video if you want to know all the spare parts. But it came with a lot of spare parts. Oh yeah, spare rods. It came with a set of spare rods. That was really nice. Yeah, that's about it. I mean, they thought the whole design out really well. So let's get to the cons. There's a 32-bit board in this guy, but it doesn't have socketed drivers. So it's loud and you can't do anything about that if you're gonna stay stock. So to me, I found that to be a problem. The firmware, it's not Marlin. It's what, as far as I understand, it's G2 firmware, which is extraordinarily difficult to kind of navigate through the codes are very different than Marlin. And uh, I spent hours trying to calibrate just the E-steps and I, it, it just stopped responding at one point. It was like, nope, I don't care what you say. So I had to basically flash it back to stock. And that was a few hours wasted. So I was pretty disappointed in that. I've actually had several conversations with Anycubic about that. And hopefully with any luck, they are gonna make some changes. So. I personally am going to make some changes and I'll talk about those in a minute. So uh, other than that, the only other changes that I've made, as I said, I added TL smoothers and I changed the fan duct and you saw the difference in the prints between the before and the after. Uh, I was going to print the orc over again, but it was a 12 hour print, so I didn't feel it was necessary. I'll do them again at some point. The cooling in general, so with the replacement duct, it was much better. My, my preference would have been to see, uh, you know, like a, a 50-15 or even a 40-20 radial fan instead of them back here. That would have been, you know, a lot better in my opinion. So, but hey, I can always change that too. It's not the end of the world. The only other con, and it's not really a con, it's just, again, my preference. Now, most of my printers, I actually have Titan arrows on. Um, all of my Creality machines I've upgraded to an authentic Titan Arrow. Um, and uh, on my SX4, which is behind the Predator, um, I upgraded it to an authentic Bontec BMG. So I would have really loved to have seen, I guess, a better quality Titan on here because it's not an authentic. It's, you know, it's their own version of it. It's not exactly the same. And it does skip steps once in a while. So um, personally, I would probably, I'm probably gonna put a, a BMG on this once I get into the other stuff, which is going to be, I am going to swap the board out in here for an SKR 1.3 and put some TMC 2208s in here. I know some other people that have done it and said that that made the difference between having a really good printer and an amazing printer. So hopefully uh, any cubic will get on board with the conversations that I've had with them and uh, I'll keep you posted on that, I guess. So the only other thing I did this and so I have two other Captain America prints and this was the third one because this being my first Delta, I wasn't really thinking about certain things at the end of the print, like what happens to the print head. So just a, a note, if you do get this printer, which I recommend, um, I, I may sound like I'm complaining about little things, but in general, like I said, this is an amazing printer. Um, make sure that you set your end script to home all and to not disable the stepper motors <laughs> because if you do what's going to happen is you're the first well the first time it happened 
it just stayed where it was and nothing happened. The second time I didn't change, I apparently had a script, an end script in Octoprint as well. So my Simplify 3D script told it to home and not to disable. But then my Octoprint script hit and it disabled and then the hot end came right back down while it was still hot and buried itself into Cap's head. And it looked very much like, if you've seen Starship Troopers, what happens after the brain bug gets them. I hope you get that because I thought it was funny. So I'm going to end this video before it gets super, super long. Um, I do want to just one more time just mention I want to thank uh, filaments.ca for sending me all of this great filament to be able to test this printer out and be able to run a bunch of prints in different colors. I really appreciate that. Um, and I'll put a link to their website in the description as well. So that's about it. Hopefully this video was helpful to some people. If it wasn't, that's okay too, but maybe at least it was a little bit of entertainment. Anyway, if you liked the video, please give a thumbs up. If you hate the video, please feel free to give a thumbs down. That's cool. Comments, I, I love and appreciate um, constructive comments or hey, I love your shirt comments because it's Optimus, so come on now. Um, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And um, I have a lot of great video ideas that I'm working on right now. Uh, I've been working with Mosaic Manufacturing with their palettes and their, the Palette 2 and the Palette 2 Pro. And I've got them both here and I, I'm really excited to do some videos with those. I have a, a ton of stuff, so if you want to see some new content, hopefully you will stick around. Anyway, this is Chris from Versus 3D. Have a great day.